Good afternoon, everyone. It's Steve KI5JWF. Hope everyone's having a good uh, good Fourth of July weekend. So, right, what I'm going to work on today on this video is I want to kind of go through and show you uh, the RT system software. And what we'll do is we'll actually talk about on the FT991A uh, software. And I purchased my uh, this is RT system software. So what we'll what we'll do is there's actually two. Uh, pieces of software that come with the uh, RT system software that you purchase uh, for the 991A. And I'll, I'll put a link in the, the description about where you actually purchase it and so forth, but it's uh, slow you buy it from RT systems. So there's, there's actually two programs. Now there is a uh, programmer, which this software here is actually what you use to program the frequencies, the quick memory banks, uh, the uh, uh, the uh, what they call programmable memory scan lower and upper channels and so forth and that's what this looks like now within the programmer within the FT991A programmer software there's an additional piece of software called the radio menu settings now this allows you to go in and configure some of the function keys and so forth that we would normally that we've normally done in the past using the you know the F1, the F2, the F3 and and various uh, menu functions but this piece of program this piece of software right here which is built into the programmer this does the same thing so what it allows you to do is you can go in and set uh, a variety of configurations and so forth uh, you can uh, you can go in you can set for example your mic scan resume uh, and and if you what you want to do here is you want to go ahead and just you know like I said this is just these are just some of the settings uh, you've got your uh, time zone um, and we're we're running on Greenwich Mean Time which is zero but you've got all the way up through plus up, up through 14 and then you've also got settings for example uh, you've got your uh, settings where you might want to set up for single sideband for example you would put in you know for the mode single sideband you would have for example F1 would be meter, F2 would be digital noise reduction, F3 would be shift, and F4 would be memory channel. CW would have its set of four specific uh, functions when it's in this mode, RTTY in this mode, and you can go in and change these. So this is the power of this thing. AM mode, you can have meter, FM mode, data mode. So there are the four different modes, one, two, three, four, five, six six modes so this is these are these these are configurable and these will actually stay uh, with the radio so what I want to show you here is we're going to go ahead to see uh, we're going to retrieve the information from the radio because uh, some of these settings don't exactly match and we're going to turn on the cable plug in the cable here And I've wanted to do this for a while because some of these settings uh, change because I didn't save them correctly. So let's go ahead and upload everything from the radio. And I'll pause the video here for a second. Okay, we're back. So I have downloaded uh, this profile here. And this is actually what's in the radio at this moment. Now the reason I downloaded this was because what I did previously is I went through and actually made some adjustments to some of these radio menu settings or button settings and I actually uh, made some very specific changes on the radio and what I didn't realize was all of these function changes that you have here um, since I hadn't previously uh, I had made the changes to the function buttons on the radio um, I never had I, since I did that. I never uploaded a current profile into RT systems. So what was happening was I had all the frequencies right, but when I was downloading the frequencies, I'll show you. There's a there's a menu option where you can actually transmit. Um, let's see, download. Uh, send radio to there's two buttons here one of them is the memory channels but what I didn't realize was since I had already updated the memory channels had everything good current where I wanted it uh, anytime I made a change to a memory channel and I I, I 
had made changes to the function buttons or the menu buttons on the radio, what I didn't realize was every time I sent a, a, a update of the frequencies, I was also, guess what, I was putting the default menu buttons back in and I couldn't figure out why the call sign would disappear and why the, some of the buttons were in different places. And I've, it kind of dawned on me that, that I was I was correcting the frequencies, but since I had never up never uploaded from the radio into RT systems, the uh, the the profile or the menu profile also, uh, I just every time I rewrote to the radio, I was just you know overriding my custom menu settings I did manually on the radio. So anyway, that was kind of embarrassing. But uh, the trick is when you get all your frequencies programmed, go ahead and use this same feature here to set your menu settings and then save it to your computer and that way both your frequencies and all of your function buttons or menu buttons are actually uh, aligned with what you want the radio to do so anyway that just kind of didn't mean to be so long on that but uh, let's see here let's just close this down so what we'll do here is now that I've got all of the current settings which is everything you see here on this screen is current this is exactly what I have there's there's dad's call sign all of these settings are correct for the modes uh, these are some of the different ones and and if you look here we've actually gone through uh, I think yeah there's some of the some of the settings are custom um, that's the um, yeah these these are the custom settings that we did earlier operating modes group monitor haven't done much with any of this but the main ideal here is I'm going to go ahead and save as and I'm going to save this as file number 10 which is actually my most current file now this time now this file number 10 here that you're looking at here guess what it has the default menu settings all of the frequencies were all correct every time I said I was dumping the default uh, menu settings every time so now what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and over overwrite this file and now we're good so that's just a quick introduction of the two different programs you have the frequency programmer here and then you have the second program which is the uh, menu editor and this is uh, radio menu settings so now the second program I want to show you is we'll go ahead and close this down I want to show you the program uh, menu editor. Now what this does is this program here, this actually goes in and all of those settings that you have, those 115 settings and so forth, uh, you can actually um, make those very specific. So I think what I'm going to do now is I'm going to get all of the current configurations that I have, all of those menu settings, and I'm going to go ahead and get that and let's see if we can get it through here I'll pause the video again okay I'm back again so this now what we're looking at here and I'll show you is uh, let's see what we can do here get this yeah so here's what we want to do I want to go to here now all of these settings, these are all of those uh, settings that you might find, for example, under the menu setup button. So what you see here, all of these menu settings here, these are now visible here. So let me get all this, let me get this all back where I need it here. So this is it. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to save a current configuration also so that I now have all of my menu settings. So what I'm going to do here is we're going to go ahead and call this file uh, k5ehl-10 and that'll match the, uh, the other file that we had. So we're going to go ahead and save that. So there's again two programs or actually three. You have the programmer which you do all the frequencies in. Then you have the program within the programmer, which is called the radio menu settings. And that takes care of those two. And then you have the last one, which is the menu editor. And that's what that looks like. You can see all the different settings I have here. And I'll show you down here where we have the parametric equalizer. 
we actually programmed a parametric equalizer today, and you see it right there. The, um, the with with the, with the speech processor, you see the P in front of it. There's also the parametric without the speech processor, and it's disabled. But this one here, we actually programmed it today. We did it on an earlier video. Here's some stuff on the wires also. And I've got a frequency programmed in here. I'm not sure if that's a, a repeater or not. I'll have to find out for sure. So anyway, that was the purpose of this video is I just wanted to show you the FTT, uh, FT991A software uh, and programmer and menu editor. And I also have other programs too. If anyone's interested, if you want to look at maybe the 300DR, I can bring that up at some point. It shows you how to program FTM300D. Um, pretty much same idea. But uh, that reminds me real quick if I don't run out of time here. On the programmer, I want to show you something else. I just forgot about this. There are, uh, you can also program quick memory banks, which I've talked about quick memory banks before, where you can actually store five different frequencies that you might want to recall at any time. For example, calling frequency for upper sideband, uh, calling frequency for uh, 10 meter FM, calling frequency for upper sideband, 6 meter FM, 6 meter, and 28400. And for example, you could actually program this one to be single sideband 146200 if you wanted to. And that way, if you wanted to move around the band, you could you could go in. And where these, these frequencies here are found, so I'll show you, um, let's look them up here real quick, um, quick memory bank. Yeah, that, that's uh, the quick memory bank button where you actually recall the, the five different channels and so forth. Yeah, there it is right there. Quick memory banks. And the other thing you can also look at on the software is if you want to look at, for example, uh, I've programmed in these uh, programmable limits. So for programmable memory scanning, uh, channel number one is set for... Um, 28305 to 490 and I've got different channels so what you can do is on each one of these you could put in a frequency range you could actually go into programmable memory scanning turn the VFO to the right one time to go into manual memory tuning and then you could press the uh, the scan button and it will actually scan that entire frequency range so again it's got actually it's got nine up to nine different programmable uh, memory scan banks where you can program different regions of uh, frequency ranges. So P1 could be 10 meter, P2 could be 6 meter, P3 could be, um, you know, 2 meter. You could actually set it up to program beacons or or calling frequencies. So you could kind of go through and and if you're interested in running 10, you could go in and scan it and just have the radio sit over here and scan. And if, while you're doing something else and if you start hearing stuff, you can come over and work the radio. So uh, there's the home frequency, um, quick memory banks. So that's some of the others. All right, well, that concludes this video. This was more or less an overview, and I have this document I'll show you. This is a document I'm working on. If you're interested in this, I'm constantly rev revising this, so it's, it's, it's going under continuous changing. So if you're interested in it, uh, in the video or on my homepage, there is on, under the About tab, you will find my email, but you have to click on the uh, button and it wants to verify that you're not a robot. And if you will do that, it'll give you my email address and email me and I'll send you the latest PDF I have. Uh, and that way it'll kind of give you, this is this is how I make my videos. I have all of this information documented, step-by-step uh, -step procedures. Uh, I've actually taken a lot of the procedures from the manual and tuned them a little bit. And what I do is when I write the procedure, I actually do it while the radio is turned on. So. Uh, you know, it kind of gives a just an authentic, uh, you know, step-by-step -step process. So, you know, no one on, no one wants to get lost when you're following a procedure and you kind of go, well, I'm not sure if I'm supposed to go here. But anyway, we try to be as thorough as possible. So anyway, that's all on this video. This is KI5JUF Steve. Everyone have a great 4th of July. And uh, again, if you would like a copy of this, just email me and I'll be more than happy to send it to you. 73 and have a great 4th. We'll talk to you again. Thank you. Thanks for watching.